The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Friday morning. We got a jobs Friday, non-farm payroll number coming up for the month of August. A little bit of a miss on the top line number. We'll get into that in a moment. Market's taking it in stride right now. We get the S&Ps within about four points of the close yesterday. We'll zoom in on the action overnight. You close on the S&Ps about 45.35. You creep higher for most of the overnight session. You come into the jobs number at 8.30 this morning at about 45.42. You spike higher briefly. You give it up. And just like that, we're within about a couple of points of that number. Remarkable. NASDAQ, pretty similar story as well. Now, tech stocks, the big tech stocks especially, very much impacted by yields. You see some rising yields, folks. You're going to see that NASDAQ 100 pull back in a big way. Uh, they are growth companies. They are exposed to future yields in a big way. You see the move. Initially, a spike higher, thinking a jobs miss might give the Fed some pause before they start tapering, before they start the discussion in terms of higher interest rates. But just like that, the market says, hold on a second, maybe we're not adding the jobs that we need to. Nonetheless, pretty tame action when you look at where we are compared to where we were prior to that number within about 20 points in the NASDAQ 100. You're positive across the board right now. You get the Dow up 29 points. You spike till below 35,380. We're up about 100 points from the lows on that spike this morning. And the Russell, a little bit of volatility as well. Russell, not quite back up to where we were this morning, but still positive by one point. Crude, remarkable acceleration as well. Yesterday, you make it up to $70.61. We're right near those highs right now at 70.44 in crude. Gold really catching an acceleration as well. Look at that gold pop on that news, and it's holding on to the gains. Gold spikes to 18.32. And we're sitting at 1828 right now in gold. Silver's up 54 cents. There's an acceleration for you above where we were on the initial spike in silver. The 10 year continuing to trade a little bit lower, jumping over to where we are, too. That puts us on the yield of about 1.33% right now. Excuse me, folks. 1.33%. The yield on that 10 year, quite a reversal. I mean, it's going to be an interesting Friday, folks, where we head. There's a lot to digest in this number. Let's get right into it. Post smallest gain in seven months amid the Delta spread. Um, it's it's very unfortunate that we're dealing with the level of cases we're dealing with. We're dealing with the level of hospital hospitalizations we're dealing with, folks, largely because people who are unvaccinated are the people who are ending up in hospitals, clogging up the system. We got deaths approaching 14 to 1500 deaths a day. Uh, if you don't think that's hitting the economy, folks, you're wrong. Because there's the number in August, okay? 235,000 jobs added in the month of August. And when you get into where they are added, all right, pulling this up. Now, I want to make sure I get these numbers because the numbers were pretty much had to do with leisure and hospitality. All right, leisure and hospitality jobs, which had been the primary driver of overall gains, those are the jobs we have to open back up, folks. It's not happening as long as there's 1,500 people dying a day and hospitals are full to the point of we have oxygen shortages forcing Texas oil refineries to stop refining oil because liquid oxygen is being used for the hospitals across the board. Um, unfortunately, unvaccinated members, folks, are, are hurting the economic engine of this country. It's that simple. You're seeing it. You want to talk about economic strength? We're only added 235,000 jobs in the month of August when we got like 8 to 10 million to make up. And leisure and hospitality is literally flat, okay? Stalled in August as unemployment rate in the industry ticked higher. Did you see that? The unemployment rate in leisure and hospitality ticked higher. And I believe it was restaurants um, even saw a negative in here. Now, there's going to be a lot of variance. Hopefully, this subsides in the near term in terms of the spike that we see. But uh, nonetheless, an unfortunate number when you look at it on the graph. I mean, there's no way to spin that type of a re reversal in terms of having close to a million jobs. I think CNBC, uh, excuse me, Bloomberg puts it. Where are we? Excuse me. Come on. 
There's the chart I wanted. Uh, quite a miss. Things were supposed to really ramp up here coming into August, September, October. I've been saying it every single time the jobs number comes out, folks. I've been saying all this does is put more emphasis on future months, right? So we got 235,000 jobs added in August. While we got a, a Fed meeting September 21st and 22nd, I believe. Let me pull that up on the chart. Make sure that's on Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday and a Wednesday. Maybe it's 22nd and 23rd, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, we'll pull it up to be exact. But nonetheless, we got a Fed meeting in about three weeks. Uh, and then we're going to get September numbers. And if we don't have anything by September and then October, there's only two more months that we can make the argument that we have to get over the Delta hump and we have to get over the summer volatility. Kids are going to go back to school in September. Extra unemployment benefits are done with, I think, as of Monday, Labor Day, September 6th. All of those excuses are now gone. So I don't know what happens when we roll around to the month of September non-farm payrolls to the month of October non-farm pay non -farm payrolls if we're still dealing with only a couple hundred thousand jobs added, folks. Uh, not what you want to see. Hopefully leisure and hospitality rebounds in a big way. But that's a bad number. And the market's not going to be able to like it for too long when we're dealing with uh, potential for 8 to 10 million jobs. We still got to make up to get to pre-pandemic levels. We get job openings to the tune of 8 million jobs open. And we can't add more than a couple hundred thousand jobs in the month of August, which is usually a big month um, that you could put in there. So that's going to put some fire on the fuel when we open this morning in a big way. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on in terms of stocks. We got some earnings this mar um, morning, and I'm seeing the headline out here. Apple delays controversial plan to scan iPhones for child exploitation images. Uh, we're just going to jump to this one because this is an interesting story. Uh, not what you wanted to see, in my opinion, in terms of creeping into your photos. Uh, Apple was just going to begin searching your phone for... You know, the worst of the worst, folks, child porn, you know, child explo exploitation. Everybody should be in jail forever if you're dealing with anything to that, right? I think we all agree on that. But when you start talking about a private company just scanning your phone, folks, everything that we do is going to be on our phone, okay? So where does it stop there, right? Do they start scanning any type of text you have? And then maybe they report you to authorities if you're talking about anything bad, right? It's a real fine line when you have a private company start talking about scanning your electronic devices, which are integral in our lives. I mean, that's it's an extension of basically your home at this point and your personal everything when, I mean, you're going to start having Apple just announced that you can start using your license in a couple states on their phone. Uh, not what you wanted to see and kind of good to see Apple that because at some level, folks, you know, the battle is on for our personal privacies here as we start to do everything we do online. And uh, it's quite a door that drops when you just have a private company that's able to just go into your phone, look for anything that might be illegal, and then report you to the authorities. Uh, that is Big Brother at its finest um, and a slippery slope, to say the least. Apple shares, positive a little bit this morning. Let's zoom in on some of these FANG stocks on the volatility. We got Apple at about 154 this morning. We got Microsoft shares sitting basically positive by a hair at 301.67. Amazon's been quite a, on quite a tear. We were pushing 3,500 yesterday. We're trading at 34.68. Interesting that you're going to get an open basically flat across the board after some volatility. Uh, we may see some fireworks. You may just see things trail off, folks, as we go into the long weekend. As I said it on the update, folks, uh, make a conscious decision, right? I love having fun. I love having a party. Love having a few cocktails, beers, whatever it is. Be safe. Take an Uber out there. We own Uber in my newsletter. So take an Uber, please. Uber. Uh, up 12 cents today, but you got to plan for it, folks. All right. In that moment, and I say it, not to harp on it, drunk driving, it is tragedy after tragedy. It's unfortunate. Take an Uber. You know, protect the people you love. Have some fun out there. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free 
All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got all the markets in the green right now. You got the S&P positive by two points, NASDAQ 100 positive by four points, Dow positive by 11, and the Russell positive by two. We'll see where the morning takes us. Jumping around to some of the stocks with action this morning, we're going to start it off with DocuSign with their numbers last night. Strong numbers for DocuSign. You spike lower initially, you trade to a high of 305 pre-market, you're sitting at 298.88, you're positive by about four bucks. Oh, no, we're not open. Excuse me. I'm, I'm used to uh, 918. We got 12 minutes to go. Okay, that's why uh, we're not quite open yet. Uh, taking a look at DocuSign, though. Strong company, folks, in a big way, as we all know, changing the way we do business. Uh, there is no reason. Uh, Fast Market had a great segment yesterday. They were talking about whether it's DocuSign, comparing it to a couple other companies, saying, you know, DocuSign, comparing it to maybe the Zooms of the world. And I thought it was a great comparison, the conversation they were having, uh, in that Zoom pulling back pretty sharply. Now, we have some Zoom in my newsletter um, after this pullback. All right, you've risen a bit to 295 from that low, but man, they missed in a big way on Monday. You trade down about 16 to 17%. DocuSign, though, not quite the same scenario as in, yes, Zoom might pull back a bit when we come out of the pandemic. You're not going to be spending as much time online. Thank goodness you're going to be seeing people in person. Uh, DocuSign, no no reason to be signing papers ever again in person, folks. I mean, there's no reason. Uh, everything can be done online. It's simpler. You don't have to meet people in these places. So you may not see the pullback. And you're seeing it this morning, as in we're positive by $4 versus Zoom trading down 17%. DocuSign probably going to hold on to a lot of those gains. And they might not see the pullback that you could see in a company like Zoom, Zoom as we reopen. Now, with that said... The moves that we've had, we just traded from 180 to 295 in the last four months. What's that, a 50 to 60% pop over the last four months? To put this on a daily real quick, to zoom in on that acceleration we got, that last earnings take it from 200, and it doesn't stop, basically up to 314. We're back a bit. Um, if you want to just keep in context, when you get these types of big moves, the pullback can be a little scary. We're talking about a 382, which could potentially bring it down to 270. Interesting, that matches right up to where we were back in July 15th as well. All right, we got nine and a half minutes to the opening bell, and we got markets turning a little bit negative here. We got the NASDAQ 100 down 10, S&Ps down 1, Dow down 17 points, jumping down the line for other companies. So the China stocks, got a couple articles out here uh, in terms of China stocks. 
First, we're going to look at this headline. China tech stocks drop as Alibaba's donation worries investors. Okay, so that's one headline out there. We're going to take a look at Alibaba. They're talking about $15 billion that they will be spending um, in terms of a pledge to Beijing's quote-unquote common prosperity vision would hit profits in the coming years. You better believe it, folks. They're getting, uh, they're getting leaned on, for lack of a better term. They're getting leaned on very hard by the politicians in China who run the show. Uh, to dole out some of the billions of dollars that they are taking out of that market. Um, I mean, I think, what was it? Was it, I think, some one of these is going straight to farmers. I forget whether it was Alibaba or, no, here we go. Alibaba joins a growing number of peers in promising to give back after accumulating vast wealth during a decade-long mobile internet boom. Pinduoduo Duo pledged its next $1.5 billion in profit to farmers' welfare. I chuckle because you can see the politics playing, folks, all right? You got Xi running that country. You have the Chinese that are living in cities, that are educated, that are working for tech companies, flourishing dramatically. You have the millions, if not billions, of Chinese that aren't benefiting, um, that are sitting on the sidelines Chairman G, making sure that they are going to be taken uh, care of in a big way. So they are getting, as my dad says, nice word, leaned on um, pretty heavily to dole out those profits. And, man, that's, you better believe that's going to weigh on these companies. And the uh, markets are dropping as we're talking, folks. Uh, Alibaba just got a pop to 180. We're trading at 169.05 this morning. Now, Diddy getting a pop. Diddy's getting a pop because if you own Diddy, you might be in the business with uh, the country of China, as they may be taking a stake. That's what you like to see um, in terms of potentially taking a stake. Diddy rallying pre-market following a Bloomberg report that Beijing was considering taking a stake in the ride-hailing company and possibly bringing it under state control. China loves state companies uh, in a big way, and uh, that would make sense. I mean, you know, you look at some of these companies, and if you're running a dictatorship, which essentially is what China is, and you want to control all the data, wouldn't you want to control the one company that's literally providing travel services to every single Chinese person out there? And I'm exaggerating. It's not everybody, right? But you see the type of things at play over in China in a big way. So, yeah, Diddy getting a pop. Um, you know, there's potentials all over the place in these equities, folks, for pops. When you trade from, you know, what were we just trading at? On August 23rd, we were at 723. This morning, we're going to open almost $2 higher, right? That's almost a 30% pop in this equity. Um but in the in the same time, you have Alibaba that just got a bid from 152 to 178. And this morning, you're going to open down ten dollars for Alibaba. Still trading at 168 this morning, as in ten dollars off of the high that it had just yesterday on that stock. All right, should be interesting to see where we go on the open. We got about six minutes. Nasdaq 100 creeping on the upper boundary line of that channel line. I've been talking about it for the last four or five days. We're trading 15,572. S&P kind of in the middle, depending where you draw that channel line, though, maybe bumping up against a smaller channel line it's been in since about May 14th. Dow, on the other hand, bumping on the bottom line of that channel line it's been in, and Russell uh, just kind of coming up to the top of the consolidation. Russell, within reach for the first time in a while of potentially all-time highs, maybe not going to be happening today if all the markets are in the red but the russell within only about 65 to 70 points of the all-time highs and you see creeping up to the top of that consolidation let's check back in on gold gold right now coming right up to that 618 going to be an interesting area for gold critical area when you look we're coming into an area of resistance july 15th that we pulled back from you're coming into the area of resistance from late july and early august that gold really fell out of bed from also correlates to the 618 of the full collapse we had. And you back this up a little bit. What's so interesting is that 1677, what was it, 1677.90, just right down to these same lows you had from April, excuse me, March, also from the low of March and early in that level. But as you see, gold bumping up against that level. If it gets through about these highs of 1830 or so, maybe 1920, the next stop for gold. As you see, kind of a one-way trip in both directions. Quite a consolidation if that's the trading range, folks, from 1675 up to 1920 in gold right now. All right, continuing down the line, Netflix. Man, how about Netflix, right? Talk about a run higher. So yesterday, Netflix gets to, was that yesterday? Yes, it was, to 598.76. They said, Netflix? Positive 14 out of 15 sessions, hitting an all-time high yesterday. Uh, that's a run, folks. Look at that run. We were just trading August 12th at 5.07. We made it up to 5.98 last night. You put this thing on a little bit longer time frame. Three-year weekly, 
I mean, that's a decisive break above this consolidation. Even if you pull back to kind of test this area, you're talking about a high potentially in the 570 area that you could pull back to, which would be the top of that consolidation area. Netflix trading at 587. We'll jump to Disney. Another stock been trading a little bit higher. Nothing like it, nothing like Netflix, the run it has gotten, though. Putting it on a 15-minute Disney trades to 185.30 yesterday. Right now, this morning, we're basically flat on Disney shares. And let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we come into the opening bell. We got three and a half minutes until they ring that bell. We got Amazon shares right now down a bit. NASDAQ 100 down 25 points. Microsoft shares down a bit as well. We're talking about pennies. Actually flat, 301.15 down from the highs we had pre-market, though. Apple, Quite a juggernaut. Apple has been positive. Apple, of course, Apple, the only uh, fang stock. Apple in the positive. Interestingly, you have Apple in the positive, and we got the NASDAQ 100 in the negative right now. Apple up about 35 cents coming into the open, and we'll finish off with Google. Google shares. Google, slightly, ah, uh, we got a bid ask spread above and below of the close yesterday. Come on back, folks. We'll be back in three minutes for the opening bell. We'll go through some of the other equities that are moving on this Friday. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got all the markets in the red to start things off on Friday ahead of the long weekend. We got the S&P negative by seven right now. 
The Nasdaq negative by 24. Interesting action when you look at the move we had in terms of the first move at 8.30 on that jobs number. We had all the markets sparking, spiking to higher prices. We had yields spiking lower. We've seen a little bit of a, of a reversal, but the opening bell putting a little bit of a bid right now into these markets. Look at that tech stocks. Don't count the Nasdaq 100 out, folks. Buying that dip. We're flat right now. We'll call it at 15,600 volatility. We'll see where we go. Let's check in on the VIX this morning. 16.18. Not bad on the VIX. And we got Bitcoin. Look at Bitcoin rocking. Putting Bitcoin back on the daily. We're coming up to the 618, folks. The 618 of Bitcoin. 51,711. That's from the full run lower we had from $65,000 and change the day Coinbase goes public. April 14th. Remarkable. That was almost five months ago, folks, that Coinbase goes public. Coinbase trading higher with Bitcoin today, up about a percent on that number. Uh, we jump over to Ethereum. Ethereum's had quite a run as well. Look at Ethereum, right? You got Bitcoin back to a 618 of the full collapse, right? But man, you got Ethereum like I even need to do this, basically back to almost a, a full reclaim of the entire losses it had. Uh, keep your eye on that. Big, uh, Ethereum, obviously stronger than Bitcoin when it's gotten back to almost all-time highs. You're within, what is that? You're within about $400 of all-time highs versus Bitcoin. You're talking about still, what are we, $15,000 $15, away from all-time highs? Almost 51000 up to sixty five, fourteen thousand five hundred away from those all-time highs. Um, you know, where those cryptos go in the future, folks, that's a tough one to figure out. But if you're in that sector, it always is nice to see which are the strongest ones and which are the weakest ones, right? Um, Bitcoin showing a lot of strength, right? trading from 30,000 to 51. But Ethereum has basically almost gotten it all back so far. And you only got Bitcoin trading at 51,000, which is uh, 14, 15,000 still. That's a solid 20% off of the highs that we were at on Coinbase. Now, what you might say in this is that when they push Coinbase public, the, the, the biggest headline out there, there it is, April 14th, was the price of Bitcoin. You know, Ethereum's a big one as well, but they could not handle Bitcoin collapsing. They had to keep Bitcoin up. Why not push it to an all-time high the day you go public, right? Uh, you're a fool if you don't think that people were buying Bitcoin interested in the Coinbase IPO. I mean, this should be a case that they teach in all business schools, folks, about trading and about IPOs and about pumping up markets because Bitcoin pushes 65,000, Coinbase pushes 429 on the open. And with that, we're at 208, basically in just over a month from when they go public. Uh, you buy that stock on margin, you buy it on margin almost anywhere on day one, okay? You take it at 325 and you're losing a substantial amount of your money, uh, basically in the span of a month to five weeks on that equity. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. We talked about DocuSign. Their numbers, they beat by seven cents. Adjusted earnings, uh, adjusted quarterly earnings of 47 cents a share. Revenue topped forecast as well. Raised its full year guidance for total revenue, subscription revenue, and billings. Let's see how they're doing on the open this morning. They were higher pre-market. You get DocuSign right now. Holding on to those gains up about 2.35%. Let's check in on Zoom. Always just keeping track of Zoom. We got some new Zoom in my newsletter. Uh, down from 350, we're trading at 294, basically slightly red with the market this morning. Also out this morning is Broadcom. They report numbers, 696 a share, eight cents above estimates, revenue slightly above as well. Issued an upbeat current quarter outlook as it continues to see strong demand in the 5G mobile market. I would say so. That market's going nowhere. There's Broadcom, and it's accelerating on the open. We're up 2.6%. You did spike lower initially on those numbers before the conference call began last night. Fubu TV. Fubo TV. Fubo TV. I always see them on my Roku. Uh, this is an interesting one. How are they going to be getting into mobile wagering? Am I going to start being able to wager from, from my TV? It looks to be the case. The sports programming streaming services shares jumped 4.5%. Now, this is pretty cool, right? You're going to be streaming sports on Fubo TV, and they're going to incorporate mobile wagering. Folks, keep your stops in place. There's nothing wrong with using a little bit of money for entertainment. I always say, you know, you go to the casino or something like that, right? You bring $100 for the night. That's kind of your entertainment fund. You're, 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 you're willing to lose that $100 because that's what you might spend some night anyway, going out to a show, going out to a movie theater, uh, whatever it is. If it's entertainment funds, that's one thing. If you're betting on sports while you're watching it, folks, that is for 99.9% .9 of people, a losing game in the long run, all right? It is not a zero-sum game. The market, the market makers in that industry, the bookmakers, take out too much of a VIG 
for most people, and I'm being kind by saying most people, to ever beat the VIG. You know, you can be better than the next person, but the VIG is so great in the sports gambling business at 10% that even if you have an edge over some gamblers, you can't make up that 10%. Point being, it's a losing game in the long run. Doesn't mean you can't have a little fun um, with it. One of the reasons why, just so to jump and keep going, we'll get back to the market in a second, that I think it's ridiculous that online poker is not legal is because I can go down to the Hard Rock in Tampa and basically lose my entire house if I wanted to, okay? Um, and the minimum game that you can play at most casinos is pretty substantial. You're buying it with $100 usually. Maybe you're buying it with $200. That's like one of the cheapest poker games they have out there. It's about a $50 to $100 buy-in. At least you should really probably be buying it with about $200 to be sitting with a proper chip stack. Point being, online poker folks, you can play a poker game for $2 and have fun. You can play a poker game for $5 and have fun. You can bet on a sports game if you want to and bet $5 on your team and have some fun, which I think is so cool um, about it. It's unfortunate that, I'm, that that's uh, not happening in many states right now. I'll end my digress. All right, jumping down, we'll jump to cannabis real quick. Aurora, they got an upgrade to hold from underperform. Not exactly the biggest upgrade out there when it's a hold. Um, at Jefferies, number of factors including valuation, right? Valuation. I, I emphasize that because, man, these pot stocks have been pummeled lately. You put up the three-year weekly. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever see these highs again. You got to go back to that um, – almost five year to see a couple of runs this thing had aurora has been chopping around at eight bucks we've dropped um we've jumped to 20 on a couple occasions um uh, but valuation when basically you're you're trading for pennies compared to where you where you were prior and let's just even take a look at you know can can it be you know same type of deal you may see some value here folks only because they've gotten pummeled so much but man these stocks haven't found it yet remarkable when you think that we are back to just for some context here uh, you come into October and November in terms of you get Democrats who are supposed to be maybe a little bit more open to legalization of cannabis. You get the efficacy of the vaccines. I never would have thought you would have seen these cannabis stocks, folks, back to prior to last November in terms of the landscape supposedly changing. Not quite the case. The market getting a little bit too far ahead of some of these cannabis stocks. Um, you know, you got cannabis up 1.15 percent today. And, you know. I trade these folks, I have traded them, um, and they're great equities and I think they have a future. The problem is either you gotta have a very long-term perspective right now, and I'm talking two to three years or something because they're not behaving like the future is bright anytime soon in the next six to 12 months, uh, or you just get a stop in there and, and you're not uh, averse to taking a stop if you get traded out in terms of putting it on a daily. But you can see there's been many times that these things have caught a bid you know, even backing up to May 21st, you rise from a price of about 22. Within a few days, you're trading at 26. You're back up to 26 and change in June. And just like that, we're at 17. Just like that. All right, folks, we got a little negative action. We get the NASDAQ ticking across the top of its channel line. We're down 26 points in the NASDAQ 100. The Dow down even 100 points. S&P's down an even 10. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. We'll check out what else we got going on Friday before Labor Day weekend. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for valued tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets oscillating in both directions. We got markets in the red with the S&Ps, negative by eight. NASDAQ catching a little bit of a bid off that spike. We got to a low this morning on the open. We open right at around, we're about 12 minutes into the trading session. We open on the NASDAQ 115,555, up a bit from that price level, still negative by about nine points uh, for the NASDAQ 100, as they say. As our man Basil Chapman coming up next says, the day is young, folks. Uh, jumping over to some analysis of that jobs number this morning, I have Ben Castleman. He's a reporter out there, business for the Times. Some interesting stats when you look at in terms of where we are in terms of wage growth remains extremely strong in leisure and hospitality specifically, though growth rate has slowed a bit from the peak. But now you look where we are to pull this up, right? Change in average hourly earn earnings, the three-month average, Leisure and hospitality, spike and higher. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out in terms of there's some trends in these numbers here that could point to inflationary, which is kind of why this market's jumping around back and forth. Uh, despite the slowdown in hirings, earnings growth remains strong. Average hourly earnings rose 0.6% in August and are up 4.3% from a year ago. For non-supervisory workers, those numbers are 0.5% in August and 4.8%. Uh, quite the number and that's changed from prior month there you're seeing decent numbers when you're talking about month to month on there now a couple others here we are uh yeah there's the work from home tendencies in there yeah retail jobs was a tough one right so here we'll get into well, it's monthly change in retail jobs, seasonally adjusted and millions actually in the negative there. And then you get to monthly change in hotel and accommodation jo jobs, seasonally adjusted almost in the red. Retail jobs also fell. Hot hotel accommodations barely rose. Clear slowdown in hiring in industries that require face-to-face -face interaction with the public. Folks, I was talking about it yesterday with Teddy Kegstat when he came on. Uh, we were talking about whether it's just uh, certain restrictions being in place. Folks in Florida, we hear it all the time. Everything's open. I tell you, as a person with a family and with kids, it ain't going to matter if things are open if we're seeing cases to 20 to 30,000 cases a day uh, with hospitals full to the point of literally turning people away that need care. Uh, it's just not going to happen in a big way. And you're seeing it in these numbers in a big way. Now, getting into the numbers in terms of where we are versus the pre- pandemic levels. Now, I don't know if we're going to get back there anytime soon, folks. There's a lot of people um, that might have been working prior to COVID and maybe their life changed in some capacity and they're not quite going to come back. But we're 5 million jobs under where we were prior to the pandemic, okay? And if you take in the 
trend in terms of where we would be with the growth that you would normally hit, there you see the trend line. I'll blow it up for you, okay? We were sitting at about 152 million jobs, I think that number looks to there. Um, you know, I can't be exact, but if we're talking about this is the distance of 10 million jobs, you add here, we're talking about, what's that, maybe 156, 157 or something. We got about eight to 10 million jobs to get back to where we were if we were just achieving the same level of growth. I mean, we're gonna be pushing two years past this drop off in the next five or six months. So you can't just get back to the employment level that you saw two years ago. We were supposed to be achieving growth over those two years, folks. That line is supposed to be extending to get back there. And we're only adding 235,000 jobs added in the month of August. Now, giving you the other side of that as well, though, is that we had an upward revision for the month of July, a million plus jobs in July. If we get a hold of this Delta variant, if the vaccinations keep rising, okay, and we get a hold of it, you could see a, some encouraging data as in maybe the market liking the fact that things really were firing on all cylinders in July. We got a pause in August with the Delta variant. Hopefully that begins to subside or plateau, uh, but the market's battling right now and we're seeing it. Interesting that we're sitting so close to where we were flat, especially considering the volatility we saw. I mean, you're talking about 120 points from high to low just this morning, and we're sitting within seven points of flat right now in the NASDAQ 100. All right, continuing to jump around to what else we got going on. Uh, MicroStrategy, last one. Um, yeah, that's a Bitcoin stock, so they are obviously with some volatility on their numbers as well. All right, what else? Jump into a story that caught my eye on Bloomberg, talking about states. This is an interesting one when you talk about, I mean, we should be aware, folks, that stimulus is driving a lot of the action out there, and there are going to be some winners and losers out here with the amount of money that stimulus is pushing out in a big way. Um, and this ties into everything. You talk about infrastructure, right? You want to talk about infrastructure? How about the infrastructure in New York going on right now? You're talking about, let alone the loss of life, which is always tragic, all right? We're talking about 41 people in a rainstorm in, in what could be argued one of the wealthiest cities, not definitely one of the wealthiest, if not the wealthiest city in the whole world, folks, in terms of the money available that runs through New York City uh, and New York. 41 people killed locally. Um, and you look at the numbers in terms of what they're dealing with, I think they got a price tag of 50, yeah. Ida's parting hit on New York and the Northeast likely pushed the storm's overall economic losses and damages into the 50 to 60 billion range. That's one storm ripping across, and I believe that's gonna incorporate though, um, the damage that it did in the South. But you can see that money, um, it's gonna be spent. Now this talks about the state, so, New Jersey's bailing out cash strap renters, all right? Florida's writing $1,000 checks to police officers. All these states kind of figuring out how they're gonna spend the stimulus they've gotten. They're among states nationwide that have been figuring out how to spend nearly 200 billion in direct aid provided by Biden's American Rescue Plan, an unprecedented handout intended to ensure that the US economic recovery wouldn't be derailed by the type of fiscal crisis that followed the last recession. And they get in here how every state's doing things differently because every state is different, folks, in terms of the revenue that maybe that state has achieved or not achieved during the pandemic in terms of where you get in. So here's a quick chart, and this is alphabetized, not put in terms of where they are physically in the state. Uh, in terms of the green is how much they have allocated or spent already of their funds. The red is unallocated. You see a state like Florida, we've spent 5.35 billion of the 8.82 that we are set to get. California and Colorado spending most of their money. You have states like Kansas and Iowa at about 16%. You have some states not spending any of it yet. Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, um, North Carolina, North Dakota as well. Now, one reason is that, that the, these numbers are differing so much is that certain states' tax collections have rebounded or not rebounded, depending on that state's basically makeup of how they collect taxes in terms of state like Florida that achieves a lot of taxes due to tourism. Uh, we're in the red in terms of where we are. States like tax revenue percentage change from April 2020 to March 2021 versus April 2019 versus March 2020, as in basically, tell me the comp of how much tax revenue states took in from April of 2020 to March of 2021 versus what they took in the year prior. I mean, look at, there's a lot of states that took in more money, 
right, that, that that actually increased the amount of tax revenue they had. And on the flip side of that, though, there are some states really suffering. Florida, one of them, down 8.2 percent because of a lot of tourism dollars. We got no state income tax, folks. Um, so you're seeing that in a big way in terms of getting hit. Texas down 10 percent, North Dakota down 14, Hawaii down 16, and Alaska whew, down 46 percent. Um, not sure why that Alaska one is so drastic in a big way. But then they get into how they're spending them as well. So how four different states are spending relief cash, okay? You get into, uh, in terms of infrastructure, climate change, they talk about Florida, putting a lot of it into infrastructure, $4 billion they're putting. Um, and I'll get into this a little bit more. Florida, one of the states most susceptible to global warnings, spending over a billion dollars on environmental projects. We need them, folks. Stay tuned, I'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're about 25 minutes into start of trading for Friday before Labor Day. Again, have a great Labor Day weekend out there, folks. We got live programming coming up all day at TFNN. Uh, be safe out there. No drinking, no driving. Take an Uber, folks. It's too easy to make that decision. Don't make that mistake over the weekend as you go out there and have some fun with the people you love. All right, getting back into these numbers, just uh, interesting stuff. State finances quickly snap back, and this kind of points to originally that money was spent 
um, by the federal government to the states to make sure things recoiled as quickly as possible. Some of the states rebounded quicker than we thought. As we know, you get into the numbers. Now, Florida, you look at the state taxes, not quite rebounding yet. States like Idaho were back in no time um, as well. Now, you the states have until 2026. Yeah. So some of the states that rebounded right away and didn't need that money have this opportunity to really spend that in the best way that they think possible. So you have in Florida, you have students who read below grade level. They're going to get free books delivered to their homes as part of that program out there. Um, you get into. Yeah, exactly. So New Jersey focused its first round of aid around tackling immediate needs, about 865 million going to social programs, providing money to renters. Over 13 billion has been set aside by states for such social related programmings. Um, it's a huge part of New Jersey. And you get into New Jersey numbers, right? We're talking about huge drop off. When you look at where they were initially, they needed that state funding. But then you look at where you go from here. And we talked about the infrastructure deal. Some of the spending reflect local concerns. As we said, Florida, they're going to spend a billion dollars on its environmental projects like local government grants for resiliency projects and using 100 million for high resolution mapping of the coastal seafloor. Uh, that's an important one, folks. OK. <laughs> We, you know, being in Florida, I tell you, it's a big one in terms of not waiting until it's too late to address those concerns. We see what happens in terms of the concerns when they are not addressed and we're dealing with 50 to 60 billion dollars in problems right now um, from some of just one storm ripping across that northeast. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up live next. We got markets in red right now. We get the NASDAQ negative by just six points. We get the S&Ps negative by 12. The Dow leading the way down, down 155 points at 35,268. We got gold rocking up 15 bucks, folks. We got Basil Chapman. He's coming up live right now with the Traders at uh, Tiger Technicians Hour. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> 